Hi there and welcome to this second part of a multi-part tutorial about the Frag AI capabilities. In this part I will proceed with the second half of the data pipeline that is used by the artificial intelligence process to predict traits based on data we have in our data frame. Let me first refresh the first part of this pipeline for you. It consists of multiple steps and in each step the data is manipulated and analyzed to make a prediction. Eventually, these predictions will lead to a trading decision that will be made by the trading bot. In my previous video, I explained the first three steps of the process and explained what base features, targets and predictions were. I also told you what features, feature factors, labels and vector matrices were. And furthermore, I talked about the expanding of features and cleaning up the data so that we eventually get a good set of data for the steps that I will explain in this video. And these steps are the adaptive learning part, model training, making predictions based on these models, some post-processing, and finally of course the decisions to make trades or not. And if you haven't watched the first video yet, then here's a warning for you that I'm not an expert in this field and I've studied all this material by myself. So my explanations or interpretations on some concepts might be wrong or not completely clear. Also, if you would like to know more about the functionality or concept, then I advise you to dive into the documentation of FragTrade and machine learning by yourself. Because the website of FragTrade and FragAI is loaded with useful, albeit advanced, information about the AI features this bot has. And there are also loads of websites and YouTube videos to find about these fields of knowledge. For example, this free CodeCamp YouTube channel with loads of videos about these subjects. But let's proceed with the next step in the Frag AI data processing pipeline, which is the adaptive learning step. Adaptive learning is a process where the model is updated continuously as new data becomes available. This is in contrast to traditional machine learning, where the model is trained once on a fixed dataset. Adaptive learning is important because the real world is constantly changing. Data may become outdated or new data may become available that can improve the model's performance. By adapting to new data, adaptive learning models can stay up to date and provide more accurate results. Let me give you an example on how adaptive learning can be used in the real world. A trader develops a machine learning model to predict the direction of the price of the BTC-USDT pair. The model is trained on historical data on this pair, as well as other factors such as technical indicators. Once the model is trained, it can be used to generate trading signals. For example, the model might predict that the BTC-USDT price is likely to rise in the next hour. The trader can then use this signal to open a long position on the pair. However, the market is constantly changing. Economic conditions, market sentiment and other factors can all affect the price of currencies. This means that the trader's machine learning model may become outdated over time and can produce false signals based on obsolete data. To address this problem, the trader can use adaptive learning, which is a continuous loop of learning activities. Adaptive learning will also allow the model to update itself continuously as new data become available. This will ensure that the model is always up to date and provides the most accurate predictions possible. For example, he can update the model with new economic data or technical indicator readings. The trader may also use adaptive learning to update the model with the results of his own trades. This will allow the model to learn from its own mistakes and improve the performance over time. Now the correct term for this type of learning is called reinforcement learning and the bot uses the information from its own actions here to train the model. The bot's environment tracks the performance of these actions and rewards the agent according to a custom reward that the user determines. The reward is then used to train weights in a neural network. An important remark about reinforcement learning here is that it should not be confused with a real FragTrade backtesting environment because it does not incorporate any of the complicated strategy logic such as callbacks like custom exits, custom stop losses, leverage and more advanced strategy features. But you have to read the Fractate documentation here for more information about this. 
Let me give you an oversimplified example here to illustrate what happens. Here is the current candlestick history for our example pair. Each candlestick represents a period of time showing the open, close, high and low prices. We'll use this data to make predictions. And in this context a long trade should occur when our model identifies a favorable pattern indicating a potential price increase. As time progresses, new candlesticks appear. Our learning algorithm is constantly analyzing this data. And based on recent candlesticks, the model predicts that prices will go lower. Therefore it suggests that it's not a suitable time for a long trade. Now we have even more candlestick information. The model considers this data and suggests that prices might stay within a neutral range. And in such a scenario it might not be ideal for a long trade. As the market is expected to remain stable. Now here the market has shown a price increase and our model adapts accordingly. It predicts even higher prices as it learns from the changing patterns. And then here a long trade should occur when the model identifies a bullish pattern, indicating the potential for further price increases. This learning model is also shown in a graph that shows the learning of models in a timeline. When launched, Freck AI will start trading a new model with a new identifier based on the config settings. Following training, the model will be used to make predictions on incoming candles until a new model is available. Now, new models are generated per pair and are typically generated as often as possible. However, these learning queues can become quite large and the danger is that models of pairs that are trained at the beginning from the queue can be outdated during the learning process. Fortunately, you can tell the bot to wait a couple of hours before training a new model. You can also set an amount of expired hours to tell Freck AI to avoid making predictions on models that are older than a number of hours. And after a while, the old models are purged from the system because they are no longer relevant. Also, old models unnecessarily take up space and this way the system will be kept clean. Now out of the box, Freck AI is able to use the following libraries to create its prediction models. These libraries include CatBoost, LightGBM and XGBoost for creating regression, classification and multi-target models. CatBoost is a machine learning library specifically designed to handle categorical data efficiently. In trading, this means it's excellent for analyzing different types of assets or trading pairs. And its strength lies in accurately predicting market movements and making informed decisions in markets with varied asset categories. You can think of CatBoost as an intelligent trading companion helping you to navigate the complexity of forex and cryptocurrency markets. Now, LightGBM is a lightning fast machine learning library. It excels in situations where you need quick model training and predictions. And in the dynamic world of forex and cryptocurrency trading, where market conditions change rapidly, LightGBM can provide you with timely insights. You can think of LightGBM as your speedy analyst, enabling you to adapt swiftly to market shifts that you need to quickly analyze and adapt to rapidly changing market circumstances. The last model I am going to introduce to you is XGBoost. And this is an extreme gradient boosting library known for its exceptional accuracy and flexibility across various data types. It's possible that XGBoost can help you identify hidden patterns, assess risks and maximize profits. And this is the tool for achieving precision and flexibility in your trading strategies across various data types. Now of course this is just a super high level description of these specific libraries that were mentioned on the Fractrade site and I surely recommend you to watch these excellent YouTube videos if you want to know more about their applicabilities. And I have not even mentioned all the other libraries like Scikit-Learn, TensorFlow, Keras, PyTorch, Carrot and many more that can be used with the Freck AI bot. But this was not the purpose of this video. So if you want to know more about these libraries, then I suggest you to watch or read the corresponding documentation. And let's continue with the final part of the data pipeline. After the model has made its predictions and purged its old models, there is also some post-processing before the whole cycle will be started again. 
Now these post-processing tasks are not really explained in the Frick AI documentation, but I can tell you a little bit about what happens here from a machine learning perspective. In an earlier step of the data pipeline, the data was normalized so that different features with different skills could be compared with each other. Denormalization is a process in the data preparation where you take the data that has been previously normalized and reverse that process to make it more suitable for analysis or reporting. Gathering statistical quantities refers to the process of collecting and analyzing various statistics or numerical characteristics of a dataset to better understand its properties. And finally, determining prediction confidence is the process of assessing how certain or uncertain a machine learning model is about its predictions. In many machine learning models, predictions are accompanied by a measure of confidence or uncertainty, often in the form of a probability score or a confidence interval. The prediction confidence helps users or decision makers understand the reliability of the model's output. And after this post-processing of data, we can close the loop and start all over again with the trading strategy, its base features, targets and more, which I told you more about in part 1 of this video series. Now does this mean that this will be forever in the loop? No of course not, because besides this complete machine learning process, which involves data collection, pre-processing, feature engineering, model selection, training, evaluation and more, there are also other factors that you have to be aware of. Data continuity is a fundamental aspect of this. Financial markets are ever changing and you must ensure that your models adapt to these shifting market conditions. This means keeping the training data current and addressing data drift to prevent the model from becoming outdated. Regular retraining is equally important. Models must be periodically updated to main accuracy. This entails refreshing the training dataset with recent data and retraining the model with the latest information. Risk management is also a crucial concern. Data scientists need to closely monitor the model's behavior, establishing safeguards and stop-loss mechanisms to prevent significant losses when markets unexpectedly fluctuate. Also, ethical considerations cannot be overlooked. Adhering to ethical guidelines and regulatory requirements is a must. You must also ensure that your models don't engage in illegal or unethical trading activities. Interpretability plays also a significant role, especially in trading. Understanding how a model makes decisions is vital due to the substantial financial implications involved. That's why you should also strive to make your models more interpretable and transparent. And finally, feedback loops are essential. Collecting feedback from traders and risk managers is a valuable source of improvement if you work within a company. It helps in identifying issues and making necessary adjustments for more effective trading algorithms. And with these final considerations, I am at the end of this video. If you like this content, then please smash the like button, subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section. A simple thanks will do and I will try to answer each and every comment I get. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.